Hey, Matt 31, I had a question coming out of section 6.5, number 41, and it was, how do we prove this thing? And when you take a look at this, the, the thing that I notice on the left side is I have a logarithm of base B over here, and it's base N here. So in going from the left side to the right side or right to left, I've changed bases. So I'm going to employ my change of base formula. So if I just write them out in general, if I had something like log base B of X, I always do the ratio of the log of the argument in ratio to the log of the base, right? And you've seen me um, also do it with natural logs. And, and the reason I usually use either base, I would say base 10, right, because common log or base E natural log is because I have those calculator buttons. But in all, the, the, in all honesty, I was like, not that I usually lie, but in all sincerity, you can change this into any base. So let me use a different color that might show up a little better. So I could make this log base N if I wanted to, right? So you can use the change of base formula, and in this position, you can put any number you want. So what I'm going to do here, at least one of the things I'm going to do, if I, the, the way that's most intuitive to me is this version down here. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I would see log base B of N, and I would say, okay, I want to get from base B to base N, so let me change the base. This is going to be log of the argument in ratio to log of the base, but again, I don't have to have a common log down here. I can have any base I want, so make it N, right? Why not make it N? Because I've got an N over on the right side of the equation. And then the cool thing, or I should say the sick thing that happens is log base N of N is just one, because what exponent do you need on n to get to n? You need a one, and then I have on the denominator a log base n of b, and that's exactly what I was asked to solve for, so there we go. All right? so that one, in my opinion, this is the method I prefer. I find that one's more intuitive, but I was messing around, and I mean, that sounds cheesy. I was messing around trying to figure stuff out, and so I, I found a different way, and this to me is not at all intuitive, but here I went ahead and I changed this into just common logs, right? Because that's usually how I do that. Now, if we think about log of n over log of b, I could rewrite that, and again, not intuitive, just saying it's possible. I can write that as 1 divided by log of b over log of n. And let me, let me show you how. Let me just... Um, block this off and we'll get yet another thing. I want us to think about one divided by log of b over log of n. When you divide by a fraction, that's like multiplying by its reciprocal, right? So you can see that this is log of n over log of b, and that is where we started up here. So these two things are equivalent. They're just not intuitive, or at least I would argue they're not really intuitive. And then what you can do here is you see that you have this, this expression, log of b over log of n, and you can backtrack that. You can use the change of base formula, but then go this direction, right? Let's say we're starting here and now go here. You see I have the log of the argument over the log of the base, and that's what I did, right? So that's what I changed this into, log, of, log base n of b, and then I have my fraction coming out that way. So there's two ways to do that problem. Again, I this was just me. This one, me messing around on a Friday night, having a good old time. This one is the one that I feel is more intuitive. And you might think neither are intuitive, but in my opinion, that's fine. That's fair. But this, this is the one that I would um, say is more intuitive. This is just me, like I said, being bored on a Friday night. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care. Bye.